Hey, what's up, World of Tanks community? Um, come back to another World of Tanks review, uh, as you see right here. It's going to be on the T-62A. Now, this particular Tier 10, the uh, Russian Tier 10 medium, uh, is uh, one of the most generic mediums you're going to find on the battlefield, probably, and specifically in Clan Wars, uh, other than the Bat Chat. And uh, that being said, doesn't mean it's a bad Tier 10. It's actually rather one of the best mediums, in my opinion. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and review that, you know, compare stats to the 121, uh, the Chinese tier 10 medium, which is kind of the closest thing you're going to find other than its gun. Um, also, I'll compare it in terms of a uh, gun to the M60 and uh, its predecessor, the T-54, which is, in my opinion, one of the best tier 9 mediums. As uh, uh, you know, as you guys may know, there's also going to be another Soviet medium line coming out, and I'll kind of give some information on that, that World of Tanks and uh, Wargaming have produced on the website. Kind of go over that and how those tier 7 and tier uh, 8 tanks are going to be rear turreted as mediums as opposed to the uh, just normal towards the front turret that the T-62A is and I'll kind of compare it to the stats of what's going to be in the upcoming 8.8 .8 patch so without further ado let's get on with this review alright well first things first we're going to be going over the armor and uh, as on paper as you see only 102 millimeters of armor in the front is relatively little to nothing at the tier 10 level now, um, without proper angling and proper uh, maneuverability and uh, using it to the full potential, that's probably going to be an issue uh, if you're too aggressive in this tank. Now, as a medium, it does act as a flanker. I'll go over the play style later, go over how to play it, I'll give you some gameplay, all that good stuff. But um, for the most part, um, the, the front armor, um, it's, it's nothing special, uh, especially after the T-54, the Tier 9 tank, which, let's see, <clears throat> has 120 millimeters of frontal hull armor that can be angled very well. Um, as opposed to the Tier 10, this T-62A uh, basically shines in its gun and maneuverability as opposed to just the armor, where the T-54 is li a little bit more sluggish than this, but uh, at the same time, you could rely on the armor a little bit more. So just going over uh, for the frontal armor, 102 millimeters of uh, hull armor. Now, if you do angle... Um, it it kind of gives it a, a effectiveness a little over 200 millimeters. Now, obviously, you can get at an auto bounce angle around here if people are stupid enough to shoot there. But uh, other than that, heavy tanks of the same tier, uh, obviously TDs, um, even other mediums using APCR rounds at range can just pen right through your upper glacis. Um, now, if they shoot towards the upper glacis at kind of like in straight angle, uh, like this this uh, and kind of skim the top you might be able to bounce a couple there but towards this one plate right here near these little hooks and obviously the lower glacis are going to be just butter so um that being said don't rely on your armor much towards the front uh obviously if the front's not good the rear and the back aren't going to be that good either now as you see here tracks can eat up some shots as uh the hole is up here this is where you want to shoot obviously right where the hole is um but uh, tracks, if you're angled, side scraping, if you want to do that, uh, your tracks can eat up some damage, but don't really rely on that. Uh, back of the tank, big weak spot. You're going to be getting tracked a lot there from back track shots. Uh, already can pen you easily if you're not moving, and if you're stupid and you just sit behind a rock or something. Uh, already can pen that engine deck with ease and light you on fire. Now, that being said, also you got the fuel tank and engine right here, uh, and this little big circle right there. And also, the fuel tank is going to be towards the back on the side. Now, as Russian tanks go, um, I'll go over the turret, which is probably going to be your best bet in terms of bouncing, which actually is a very bouncy turret. But um, at the same time, um, as Russian tanks go and as most mediums go, uh, there's not going to be much gun depression on this tank, so you can't really hold down unless you're in a really good position that you can find. So front of the tank, um, without gold rounds, no one's really going to pen it. 240 millimeters of armor, uh, very bouncy besides the commander's cupola, this little uh, light kind of like the M60 is a no hitbox. So if you try and shoot that, it's just going to go right through and not do anything. So uh, that, being saying, or blah, that being said, the uh, gun mantlet is going to be a little bit of spaced armor, around 20 millimeters of spaced armor, uh, plus the 240 millimeters of hull armor, or uh, turret armor, my bad. Side of the turret is okay, 161 millimeters of armor, uh, that uh, including the small part of the commander's cupola here, is going to have a little bit less, around... Uh, 140, but at the top it's just going to be butter. Now back of the turret, 65 millimeters of armor is a bit angled, um, little rounded type deal back here. But uh, this little kind of door thing right there, or hatch, is going to be a weak spot along with the gunner's hatch and the commander's hatch. 
So this side of the turret is actually going to be more bouncy because you don't get that huge uh, commander's hatch there and those uh, couple weak spots. Um, but at the same time, sides back of the turret, not going to be much of a... You can't really rely on it. But um, for the most part, just to emphasize armor, can't really rely on it. Um, you can angle, but still, you're better just to be on the move as a medium tank. So uh, next we're going to go over the gun, which is really where this tank shines. And uh, it's go over its engine, you know, a couple stuff like that. Alright guys, so as we go over this gun, one thing to point out about this uh, 100mm U-8TS is um, that its rate of fire, as you can see right off the bat, 9.09 .09 rounds per minute is going to be an insane upside to this gun. Um, as during Clan Wars, you know, if you get a pack of T-62As along with a couple autoloaders, you can just mow down targets and focus them easily. Now in pub games, it's the same deal, but at the same time, uh, like I said, there's going to be different tank compositions and matchmaker, you never know what you're going to see. But uh, with basically, I have Brothers in Arms, Gun, uh, gun Rammer, and uh, Vents, you're going to be getting roughly a 5.5, uh, I think it's 5.44 second reload time. And every 5.44 seconds, you're going to be doing 320 damage uh, with adequate pen. So that's going to just be unbearable for other tanks as long as they don't shoot you. And uh, you, you can really dish out some good DPM there. So... The T-62A, until the uh, new Tier 10 Soviet tank uh, for the medium branch comes out, is going to be the only tank in the game at Tier 10 uh, as a medium tank that has a 100mm. Now, as you see here, like the M60 and the M48 Patton, along with the Bat Chat, uh, E50M, Leopard 1, and FV4202, they all get 105s. So this is gonna, this is kind of odd one out with 100mm, but it doesn't really make much of a difference. Uh, as comparing it to the M60... Uh, Patton, the gun, the M68. As you see, this gets off almost 2.2 rounds less uh, per minute than the T62A does. So this thing's around an 8 second, little like 7.9 second reload. Uh, average penetration is going to be 4 more with standard AP rounds, as uh, they kind of nerfed that on the T62A with the 8.6 update, uh, as they did the same with the 121 and a couple other guns. Um, but that being said, it's great for sniping because of the APCR rounds, as they have a shorter flight travel time. Same with the M60's gun. Uh, however, the average damage on these other guns that have the less rate of fire is going to be around 70 damage per hit less than this t62a however dpm wise the t62a wins over all other mediums uh, accuracy wise very accurate uh, great for sniping 0.34 accuracy at 100 meters as a point as opposed to the 0.35 accuracy at 100 meters that the m60 gets m48 patent is actually 0 0.01 less at 0 0.36 uh, aim time is going to be actually very good. Um, it has less dispersion than any other tier 10 medium tank uh, while moving. Um, therefore, it's going to have the best on-the-move accuracy with combined with some perks and uh, stuff like that. So um, basically, its its aim time really makes it that much better. But at the same time, if you're on the move, you can snipe things out. I've hit targets at like 600 meters while on the move and getting lucky and stuff. So I'll go over that later. Uh, I think I have that in my gameplay too. So, um, just w one other thing to note, the gold rounds on this tank are the same as the tier 9s. So, if you play the T-54 out a lot and you're used to using gold rounds, um, you may be able to do the same with the T-62A, but you're still going to lose credits. But at the same time, I, very, uh, I suggest uh, getting used to weak spots and hitting them. So, as the gun goes on the T-62A, very good. Uh, best DPM out of any medium, and um, basically, you're going to get less alpha. For more damage over time and uh, with combined with support and stuff it's going to be a very deadly tank so next we're going to go over mobility like traverse speed speed limit uh, engine power power to load uh, power to weight ratio and uh all like the view range and stuff like that all right so as the view range and the radio range goes uh for the t62a it is just going to be a standard view range at 400 meters that's basically all tier 10 tanks has that as you see the 121 has that the uh, e4 has that i'm pretty sure the 268 has it like basically standard view range for tier 10 tanks is 400. So um, it, you won't be doing much scouting in the T-62A. Um, as you are mobile, you can spot some things, get some spotting damage, but don't really harp on that. Um, signal range is pretty good, 850 uh, meters, which is a little bit above average. I think 800 or 750 is about average for Tier 10 vehicles, uh, especially TDs, I think, have a little less. Yeah, 750 for the Folk 155 and 
745 for the E3 and E4, which is a little less. So actually very above average uh, signal range, which can help out with relaying and stuff like that. Um, next, I guess we'll go over the mobility. So let's pull up the engine. And uh, chance of fire on impact is only 10%, but don't get fooled by that number. Russian fuel tanks are very bad. So if your fuel tank gets hit, um, your chance of fire goes up by, I think, two times. So it'll be like... 20% chance if they hit the engine and if they hit the fuel tanks again it automatically lays you up on fire So that is the reason why I carry an automatic fire extinguisher. I'll get into that later, but you know uh, Engine power is only 580 horsepower, which uh, kind of is it's gonna be slow going uphill as part of weight ratio is a little better than the 121s But at the same time, it's still pretty bad um, I'll compare it to the WZ 121 in a little bit um, weight limit 37.45 tons so like I said uh, power to ton ratio is not going to be that good now as speed limit goes it's a little slower than the 121 but it does have better pickup and go so the acceleration is fairly adequate but at the same time its speed limit is 50 uh, kilometers an hour now traverse speed maneuverability great 56 degrees per second which I think is only outbeat by the Leopard 1 at uh, the tier 10 medium type of tanks um, Turret reverse speed, 48 degrees per second, is one of the best also. So like I said, with combined with snapshot and smooth ride, you're going to be getting great shots and just snapping your turret, hitting things at range. It's going to be great. So um, next, I guess I'll go over, you know, just crew skills, loadout, and then we'll get on with the uh, kind of gameplay and just go over some things. All right, so before the gameplay, I actually decided I'm going to compare this to the T-54, the Tier 9. Um, which, in, this, in the sense of a tank itself, it's basically just an upgraded version of the T-54 that loses a little armor, if that makes sense. So maneuverability, overall gun, everything gets better, but then it loses the armor. So T-54, I guess I'll pull up those details, and uh, pull up the gun's details too. Now on the T-54, when you're working up the line, um, I'll just go to that first. I kind of went through the KV-1S, because I used that for Clan Wars when it's Tier 6 and companies and stuff. So I legitimately, I didn't even play the KV-13 or the T-43. I free xp through them. Um, most people obviously just go down this way. Um, T-34 and T-3485 were pretty good tanks, however the KV-13 and T-43 are just terrible. Because they get a Tier uh, 7 gun, and they see up to Tier 9, which at the same time, it's okay for Tier 7. But just the pen is terrible. As you guys know, Tier 7 mediums are just comical, and there's not really any that are that good. Now, once you get up to the T-44, um, the 100mm LB-1 is a great gun at Tier 8. Actually, one of the best medium guns there. Uh, most people use gold rounds, a lot of it, um, as its pen is only 175. But at the same time, with a 6-second reload, you know, pretty good tank, and it's very fast, too. So that's a great overall tank, the T-44. Now, when you get to Tier 9, the T-54 stock is absolutely terrible. I'll give you that. But once you get the turret and even one of the two top guns, it's easily one of the best tier 9s. I think it's up there with the E75. Um, some people say IS-8 is pretty good. I argue that. But T-54, in my opinion, best tier 9. Same with the E75. So they're kind of tied in my book. Now, if you look at it, it's got a 700 horsepower engine, which is better than the T-62 A's. It, uh, let's see how much it weighs. It weighs around the same, so T-54 has better pickup and go, and its speed limit is 56. However, its traverse speed is only 46. So at the same time, um, you lose maneuverability at Tier 9, um, but you have better top speed than the T-62A. Uh, play styles are a little different, as the T-54 you can brawl more other than T-62A, but um, you know, you're still going to be seeing a lot of Tier 10s in this. Now, I guess I'll compare the guns. Um, as you already know, the T-54 has better armor, you can angle better, turret is smaller, all that good stuff. So, as you compare the guns, I'm comparing the bottom T-54 gun, as that is actually the better one in all aspects, except for uh, pen, I think. The penetration on the top gun that's required to get the T-62A is 219, and gold round is the same at 330, but um, if you see, the accuracy is way worse at 0.39, aim times point or 2.9 and uh, it's just worse than the other gun so and the rate of fire is worse too so if you look at the good one which is the bottom one that's not required that they added in patch i think 8.0 which uh kind of it costs a lot look at that almost 60,000 experience but if you really love the t54 like i did i suggest getting this extra gun and using that before you even try and get the t62a now 
if you're looking at it, the uh, the caliber, same 100 caliber. Uh, accuracy is a little worse than the T54. Same with the penetration, only at 201 at tier 9, which is a little, little, little low. But um, the 330 gold pen is just outrageous. That's one of the best tier 9 pens uh, for gold as a medium. Now, if you look at that, aim time is actually a whole third of a second worse, 0.3, which uh, 2.3 is not bad, but still, you're going to be waiting a while. And the rate of fire is only 7.69 rounds per minute, which is around like 6-7 seconds. So overall, um, and it has the armor piercing too, which kind of gives it slower shell travel time, which is annoying for sniping. So overall, T62A is one of the best tier 10 mediums, but it's play style as opposed to the really good tier 9, the T54, you can't brawl as much, you're going to be flanking more on the T62A, and you're going to be sniping more. So um, as that goes, that's kind of just comparing it to that, and um, next I'll be comparing it, actually I'll save that for another video, uh, just to give a little heads up, I'm going to be doing a video between the T62A and the 121, comparing both of them and uh, saying which ones are better at what, you know, which one's more viable for clan wars and uh, how clans are using it and stuff like that. So um, now we're going to go over loadout and get into the gameplay next. Alright, so loadout. Um, this this is basically just the standard, you know, some people choose to go with the enhanced gun laying drive, but on this tank, especially with its accuracy on the move, you want to go with a vert stab. Uh, vertical stabilizer is one of the best things for mediums in my opinion and uh, really up that accuracy on the move whether it's you know going 30 kilometers an hour or 50 kilometers an hour it doesn't matter on this tank uh, next you want to go with the ventilation which kind of ups everything maneuverability speed uh, reload all that good stuff um, and lastly medium caliber gun rammer which is only 200,000 um, credits as opposed to the 5,000 or 500,000 600,000 that other tanks get um, so with that being said definitely pick one of those up get your best DPM up and uh, yeah, so as, as rounds go, um, I find that sometimes sniping in this tank is annoying if you don't have the best shots at weak spots. So I do carry a crap ton of gold rounds, as you see, 20 uh, gold rounds, 25 normal AP, which is usually what I use. And by the end of the game, I'll be, it's, this is probably my perfect number personally, as I usually find I have like maybe three, four uh, APCR rounds left at the end of most games if I don't use heat. So um also, keep in mind, if you're flanking like an E100 or like a mouse or something with spaced armor, do not use heat on the side of the tank. Only use it in the back or lower glacis as the new, you know, heat-absorbing magical skirt armor, as people call it, uh, has been implemented. So, um, obviously, um, just as consumables go, I just go with a small repair kit, small first aid kit, as they don't cost that much. But then, at the same time, this tank does get lit on fire if you uh, get shot in the butt or if you uh, get your fuel tanks hurt. So... If you don't have, uh, like, firefighting or, like, preventative maintenance in your crew skills, get an automatic fire extinguisher. Trust me, it's really worth it. Only 20,000 credits. Um, if you burn it, um, if you burn through the fire extinguisher, yeah, it's going to cost credits, but it'll, it'll, it'll help you in the long run, as opposed to just automatically dying right away. You can just get up your credits with the um, damage that you can do after you're on fire. So, um, as crew skills go, you know, this is the crew that I've had ever since the T-44, which as much as I played in the T-54, I think I played like 200-something games in that tank alone, yeah, almost 300 games in the T-54. And as you see, the stats on this tank are above average, um, almost 1,000 XP per game, uh, over around 300 battles, 54% win rate, 1,600 efficiency, and I got my only crucial contribution in that tank. So this tank, like I said, one of the best tier 9s in the game. Um, as T62A goes, I kept the same crew skills from the some, uh, from the T54 to this tank, as you don't really need to change any. Um, first is going to be, you know, Commander. Um, it's just going to be the norm, uh, which many people call it, which is six cents, obviously, first. You may want to start with repairs and retrain it once it gets to 100%. Um, I personally just don't like doing that, because I really don't care about it if I don't like have repairs or anything so um six cents then i went brothers in arms for second skill on everybody and then repairs is basically my third skill on everybody except for smooth ride on the driver um as the loader goes uh for first skill you obviously want to get safe stowage um brothers in arms is up to you i got it because i love the dpm on this tank and it just makes it that much better and the uh repairs will help out too as the driver goes, smooth ride, shooting on move, obviously brothers in arms, and I chose to get off-road driving. Now for the driver, there are a lot of good um, options. You can do controlled impact, preventative maintenance, clutch braking, a lot of people use. These two down here are probably going to be the most often on this tank. Um, 
yeah, the, 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 it's up to you. I mean, I, I chose Smooth Ride just because of the acceleration and uh, terrain resistance on this tank isn't that great. Uh, obviously, for Gunner, you want to go Snapshot, I went Brothers in Arms, and then Repair. Uh, instead of Repair, you guys can do like Dead Eye or Designated Target. Uh, these are all good, um, especially Armor that's useful too, as opposed to just Repairs. But um, as I'm in this tank, I don't carry multiple Repair Kits, so I get tracked a lot because I'm very aggressive in it. And... Um, I just uh, like to have that four or five second repair kit or repair crew. So um, yeah, that's basically that. And uh, now we're going to go in the gameplay. Now this gameplay is going to be on Mountain Pass. Uh, and it's the first game I ever played on my T62A, which is pretty OP. So yeah, stay tuned, guys. All right, guys. So for today's gameplay, basically have a pretty even game on Mountain Pass. They actually have one extra tier 10, that being the Bat Chat Artie. Uh, pretty pretty um you know standard uh it's mountain pass uh you know one side of the map isn't better than the other i prefer the south side in this tank but uh you know whatever and uh, i don't know if you guys see in the uh little chat but i said time to compare this to my 121 and uh this is actually my first t62a better or the t62a game uh, I ever played, and this guy said he thinks this is better, and that guy's from G, so, you know, I'm not gonna argue with him. Uh, I'll also make a comparison video against the T62A and 121. Um, I like them both. I kind of prefer the 121's alpha, but, you know, that re the really good fire on the move with the uh, T62A is kind of amazing. Especially for Clan Wars, it's better too, but, you know, we'll get into that later. So I just start off, um, this is my first game, so I'm trying kind of just, you know, playing with the, uh, shot on the move and everything. I mean, I have Smooth Ride, uh... Mm, what's called snapshot brothers in arms all that good stuff i'll show you my crew skills later but um i kind of just start off i kind of derp out as you know you know that e75 wz111 tiger 2 got spotted e75 gets hit i believe by Artie 261 that's why he said he's reloading for 22.8 seconds uh he gets mowed down and i think he only has like less than 100 health yeah 29 health or no 20 health lol right at the beginning of the game only about a minute in and that's kind of just sucks for him uh, as you see, there's an E5. I kind of just angle, try and bounce a shot, bounce him on the move, and I get spotted, obviously. But at this point, I need help, calling for help, you know, just, like, help me. <laughs> and, uh, this looks like IS-7 KV-4 coming to help me as he hits me on the move, and I kind of just, you know, am kind of dead meat. So IS-7 ends up helping me. I think I, I kind of angle. He still pens through me. So I've already lost around... 40% of my health, and only got one shot off, so this IS-7 acts as a great decoy, he kind of helps me out, I bounce the side of his turret, just fail shot, um, but you know, it's, just this IS-7 kind of saves me, and that ends up, uh, allowing me to help the team and get almost 7k damage this game, uh, so I kind of just shell out at his cupola, and just keep penning it, and this E5, as you see with my 5.4 second reload, it just, ah, uh, this DPM on this tank is amazing, and every, almost 5.5 seconds at most, you dish out like 300 damage per shot, that's kind of OP, especially if you're unspotted and behind cover, like how the E5 was occupied with the IS-7. Now, I kind of just kind of peek, let the IS-7 take the shot, as I believe he actually misses that WZ. Tiger 2 gets spotted, E75, I'm trying to prioritize him just to kill him, but whatever, WZ comes out. Uh, I shoot him, he bounces my gun mantlet, and uh, you know, just do things from here. So IS-7 moves up, I believe he starts duking it out with the Tiger 2, not really sure, um, but, you know, I reset my camo here, uh, see if I can spot some stuff, but I believe I get spotted here somewhere, I'm not really sure. Object 261's doing work, uh, he's killing people off with his arty, doing really well. So I get shot, try and shoot, and I just panic shot, so as you see, first game of T62A, not very, uh, you know, good in it, but I end up getting very lucky, um, towards the end of this game, but, uh, you know, RNG, just, uh, even with the increased, whatever, RNG, still missed the E75's cupola, shoot this guy, get a really good shot towards his lower plate, as you see the snapshot on this tank and aim time is just outrageous, this shot, I believe I bounce his turret, yeah, I get a no damage pen on his manlet, and he, as he kind of scrapes the upper plate on my tank, I, um, you know, bounce that. So, um, as I see, they're kind of cornered. IS-7's moving up, everyone's moving up. We kind of have them pincered right here. Uh, only thing is, on our ice road, they're going to end up getting owned. As you see, they have so many tanks down there that they cannot handle with just a T-34 low and GW Tiger. And we're kind of, you know, shelling out these guys. I hit the T-69 a couple times. Um, low gets spotted. He moves up. I believe he hits me later. So right now, just using my DPM, helping out the team. And low pops out. Just keep an eye on him, you know. T69 left with 7 health, just runs away, and uh, I decided to just move up now, along with our KV4 and 
E75. Now, object 268, as you guys see, I got a pen shot there right before it disappeared, and that's just a lucky, you know, on the move shot with the 26 T62A. Just so good. I've already done around 3,000 damage. Uh, lost around 50% of my HP, a little over that, but you know, uh, if I hadn't take those two shots from the E5, would be more aggressive here. But you know, bouncing the 268 superstructure. Uh, kind of underestimating, you know, the way that this gun works. And that ends up hitting his gun manlet because of RNG. And uh, uh, I think I land a blind shot on him somewhere around here. Not really sure. As you see, it kind of exploded on something. But, uh, you know, I think I'm no damage pen. Now, he's just... I don't even know what the hell he's doing. Just pen the underside of his tank. Hopefully hurt, like, his fuel tanks or something. But, uh, you know, just get multiple hits on him. And he finally just runs away. Now, watch this RNG. I've got that. Perfect. And it just goes right above them. Now, this tank, uh, I forgot to mention, with the APCR rounds, is very good for sniping. I mean, it has high velocity, all that good stuff. And um, I completely love this. Now, along with the M60, if you guys didn't watch my review on that, uh, it, it kind of is like the same thing where you could snapshot really easy. Uh, the aim time and on the move accuracy is just amazing. So I, I just love that about these medium tanks. Uh, with my 121, you kind of suffer with the dispersion because it's... AP, a normal AP rounds and some 122 caliber. Now as you see right here, I'm just getting shelled out and I finally just repair my tracks and go fuck this. So I go and kill the T69, you know, get another, another kill, up that win 7. <laughs> so we're winning by 1. Low shot me before and the 704 kills him. Now this 268 is going right for our spawn, so I'm like shit, I don't want to chance it. So I end up going all the way there. And the 261 gets owned by object 268, obviously. So I'm just going to speed this up a little bit, you know show on the road and I end up sniping down at this uh, T32 and kill also two people I think in the process so I'm just kind of duking it out seeing where the object is he gets spotted around uh, C2 um, so the reason why I just stopped there for a little bit is to make sure that the object wasn't looking back at me now as you see I'm about to go chase him down but I figured that our IS7 T32 should be able to handle it but you know pubs never know so T32 destroys our T34 and I'm gonna go just shell this guy out with my insane DPM now this is at times one speed and like it looks fast but at the same time this gun just reloads so fast it's so good I love it uh, so shell him down um, as I move up here Batchet already fires or something gets uh, spotted Spotted right along now and I see him on the map so I just turn around and oh look perfect shot so he tries getting out of the way derp one now <laughs> wait five seconds which hardly seems like anything and he just backs up for some odd reason even more thinks he's getting away and derp now this is the part of the map where I kind of instead of just turning around and going all the way back I go the far away because I know that 26A is capping and uh, our teammates finally destroy him which took them fucking forever so you know it's Thinking about going back that way, but I just end up going all the way back to their spawn. And I think I get a few more hits as I have 5.6k damage right now. Um, as this first game in my T62A is probably one of the best games I've ever had in it. Um, I think I did have one 7k uh, loss that <laughs> really pissed me off. So as you guys see there, I get a quick shot on the IS-7. He no damage pens my track. Another shot right through his lower glacis. And as you see, I'm running out of standard AP rounds. And now I switch to um, more, you know... Uh, heat rounds, as I just love them. Now, if you guys saw, I bounced that Su 14 2 uh, really awkwardly just because the way he was angled. And uh, that, I think that's the last shot I get in 6.9k uh, damage as I kind of bounce his lower glacis one more time and then miss again. So, uh, yeah, uh, that, that's basically just the rest of this game. And I think Artie gets a blind shot on him. Watch, he goes invisible right about now. Come on. He goes invisible. Artie, watch this. Boom! GW Tiger. Uh, our team was very good. As you guys see, the people who were still alive, except for the T32, got the majority of the kills. So that just shows how uh, the G guy and me really carried it. And our GW Tiger did very well, too. Mostly kill steals, though. Won't, won't, won't argue that. <laughs> um, so I'll have the after battle reports right now. And as you guys see, first game in the T62A. Absolute rape train. Just a great tank overall. And, uh, yeah, stay tuned. Hey guys, so these are the replay stats. Um, as you see, Mountain Pass, Standard Battle, uh, XP, 1,825, pretty legit, almost 7,000 damage, uh, as that's uh, 1,117 damage per kill, pretty legit, I mean, four kills, uh, vehicles damage nine, vehicles spotted two, uh, my credits was around 100,000 at tier 10, which is pretty good, and uh, hit ratio, 81.1%, damage received, uh, Shots received 7, um, capture points, defense went 0, um, you know, it's just how it is. Um, 
Looking at the team itself, uh, an okay damage spread. Um, as you guys see, basically two ones who carried. Or actually three. Um, GW Tiger did well. Um, got some pretty good XP. Me and the G guy really carried this game. Uh, me with 7k damage, basically. Him which in which got 4,000 damage. And as their team goes, they actually had a pretty good damage spread too, but we just ended up killing all their tanks, and, you know, that's how it goes. So, basically, great result. Just showing you guys, basically, how the team did, all that good stuff. And now we're going to get on with the conclusion. Alright, guys, so to conclude this review, I guess I'm kind of going to go over uh, what the average server-wide stats are on this tank, and uh, kind of go over my stats and how I like this tank, and uh, kind of give you some tips before I let you go. So, um, basically, I've played exactly 100 games in this tank, and I have, what, 52% win rate, which I do solo pub in this tank a lot, but at the same time, uh, it's better off-platooned. Now, efficiency-wise, 1,462, a uh, little over 800 uh, experience for battle, which would explain kind of why I have so much free experience on this tank, because I don't really need better crew, so I don't turn the acceleration on. Um, I do, on average, 2.2k damage a game, uh, hit 80% of my shots, so that just proves the 80, the 80 uh, or, uh, what am I saying, 0.34 uh, accuracy at 100 meters is roughly, you know, amazing. <laughs> so, uh, survival rate in this tank is pretty good. Server-wide is a little under 19%, but, you know, server-wide you're not gonna get <laughs> good players, it's just everyone averaged. And, yeah, same, I don't even know how server-wide uh, average damage is 1,411 that's just terror bad. Um, now, uh, as you guys saw in the battle results, I actually got Mastery Badge Ace Tanker in my first game, which I was very lucky to do, because if you get a T62A, you'll know how hard it is to get it, because so many people have the tank, and it's just such a great tank. So, um, just, just to conclude this, I guess, give you a few pointers on how to play the tank, and, um, as you guys saw in the gameplay, works great as a flanker, don't be too aggressive, you know, just snipe out targets, kind of stay on lit. Once you have the advantage, kind of go in, flank targets, and uh, hit hit them in the butt. Um, DPM on this tank is just amazing. Pen-wise, it's pretty good, uh, 264 penetration. Uh, with the APCR rounds, it's just great. Um, as mobility goes, you know, just... Can't, can't really complain. It's pretty good. Uh, pick up and go is not as good as I wish it could be, but then again, I do play the 121 a lot, which just has pitiful acceleration. Um, then again, the armor on this tank is very bad, unlike the 121s, which you can actually kind of rely on a little bit. Uh, the snapshot firing on the move, quite amazing. And uh, like I said, I've only played 100 games in this tank and have that much free XP. So if you guys get this tank and you have a good crew, you could actually use it as a free XP tank because uh, it's very good. Now, also in Clan Wars, this tank, if you guys are thinking about joining a Clan Wars clan, I've had a couple, uh, a couple people ask me about uh, what tanks are viable for Clan Wars and stuff like that uh, that they're currently getting. I would definitely suggest this uh, over the bat chat, in my opinion, because um, it's easier to play. Uh, many clans, actually, I don't think there's any clans that don't use the T62A, so if you guys are getting into Clan Wars, definitely pick up this tank. Um, all I can really say is that it's amazing. I love it. I uh, definitely recommend it. Now, the next video is going to be a comparison of this and the 121, and I'll go over how the 121 is better in some ways. I mean, personally, I don't know which one I like better. I like the 121's alpha so much, but at the same time, T62A's DPM, you can't really complain about that. Um, I may have to pick the 121 just because of armor, but at the same time, T62A mo mobility and just the way it plays out, um, it's kind of... I don't know. Maybe it's just the fact that people don't focus 121s as much during games. I notice that people kind of disregard that the 121 is shooting them, and they'll focus a heavy or someone else. So, um, basically, to conclude the review, um, just uh, give me some feedback. You know, uh, comment, rate, subscribe, and uh, yeah, happy thinking, guys.